Hey, what's happening gang? Welcome to your very first Vuex tutorial. Okay then, so if you're learning Vuex, I'm guessing you already know the basics of Vue.js, otherwise this course is pretty pointless, if I'm honest. If not, don't worry, I've got a whole playlist on Vue.js for beginners, so if you want to check out that first of all, feel free to do so. The link is popping out right about now on your screen, then come back here to learn Vuex. So then, what is Vuex? Well, basically, it's a library we can use with Vue.js, which is going to help us with state management within our applications. So what's state exactly? Well, you can think of state as the data you use in your applications. So I guess state management is just how we manage that data. So what Vuex is going to do is help us to manage our state, our data within applications more effectively, especially when it comes to large applications with a lot of shared data. So it allows us to do this by creating a centralized data store, which we can store all of our data in, which can then be accessed by all components in the app. So this central store is sometimes known as a single source of truth within the application. So we have our store with all the shared data in it, and we have our components which can access that data as well. So let's just go back to a standard Vue.js application and how this looks without using Vuex. So we could have some kind of to-do application, right? And we've got a root view file right here, root component. Then we've got two different components nested within that, a dashboard view and a to-do list view, right? And then beneath those, we have more child components, the latest to-dos, which is gonna be shown in the dashboard, and also a section to add a new to-do within the to-do list. That's a component as well. So say we're storing the data up here, all the different to-do items on this root component. Then if these two components, this one right here, which shows it, and this one right here, which shows the data, if they both want to use that data, what we need to do is pass that data down as props to the different components down the chain where we need it, right? And then we can access the data within those components. Now, if we want to change this data, we're gonna add a to-do, for example. What we're gonna do is fire an event from this component, which fires up the chain to this component, then to this component, which is gonna listen out for that event. It's gonna change the data. Then it's gonna pass the updated data back down as props to the components which need it. So this looks a little long-winded, but for small applications, it's not so bad. But essentially what we're doing is making it really hard for children components to communicate with each other right? Because they have to go this long winded way around. So Vue X kind of takes that away from us. We don't need to do that anymore because we have this central store. So in a Vue X application, it's going to look something like this. We have one central store of data right here, which is storing the to do items, and it can be accessed by any component directly, which needs it, right? It doesn't have to be passed down as props through component chains. It can be accessed directly using what's known as getters. We'll take a look at those later on. Then if we want to make a change to the data, for example, from this component, we can fire off some kind of action, which is going to perform a mutation to the data. Then as soon as the data has been mutated, i.e. changed, then it's going to update in whichever component is using it. So all shared data is going to go inside this central store and it's going to be updated by different components when it needs to be via mutations and then updated in any component which uses it. So this is a much easier way to kind of share and distribute data in the application. That's not to say we can't store data outside of this central store, we can do. If there was just data that was used in this component and nowhere else, we can still define it right here and use it there, but any shared data which is used between components, we generally pop in the store like this. We have one central location for all of the data, and that is the crux of Vuex. So before we start writing any code whatsoever, I wanna show you just two tools I'm gonna to be using in this series. The first one is a text editor called Atom, which is my favorite text editor at the minute. It's really cool, it's free, and you can customize the hell out of it. You can find it at atom.io and download it by pressing this button right here. So hopefully you'll do that. Uh, the second one is Commander or CMD. -er. You can find that at cmder.net. Again, the link is gonna be down below. This is a command line tool, which is, in my opinion, better than the Windows one. And it also comes along with Git bundled into it as well. So feel free to download that as well. 
Now, of course, because I'm super brilliant, I am going to be providing you with all of the course files for every single lesson in this series. So you can find that in the Vuex playlist on my GitHub account. And if you want to, for example, see the code on lesson five, just select the lesson five branch right here and you're going to see that code right here. All right. So what I want to do now is set up a basic Vue.js application. And to do that, we're going to use the Vue CLI. So I'm going to leave this link down below as well. This is the repository for the Vue CLI project. Now to install this on your computer, it's dead simple. All you want to do is open up your console, hopefully commander, and type this in right here, npm install hyphen G view CLI. And by the way, to do this, you're going to need npm installed as well, which means you have to head to nojs.org to download that. Okay. All sounds rather complex. It's really not. In fact, I'll show you now. So you want to go to node.js.org and then you're going to see a big green download button right here. You can download this one or this one. What that's going to do is install the npm node package manager for you as well. And that is what we're going to use to install this view CLI. All right. So you want to do npm install hyphen G, meaning we're installing it globally view CLI. So that's going to install the view CLI, which is going to enable us to create a fresh view project using this command line interface right here. All right. So I'm going to do that right now. OK, so once you've installed the view CLI using NPM, we can then use the view CLI to create a new view project. So the way we're going to do that is by, first of all, navigating to the directory you want to create this project in. So mine's in Sean documents, my websites, then recording. Now, to create this new view project using the view CLI, all we need to do is say view, then init to initialize a new project. Then we need to give this a project template. Now, I'm going to use the webpack hyphen simple one. There's different templates as well. You can find those on the view CLI uh, repository if you want to read more about them. Then we need to say the name of this project. I'm going to call this a Vuex hyphen playlist. Now, if I press enter, this is probably going to say this directory already exists because I've created an empty folder called Vuex playlist. Um, continue. Yep, that's fine. So this is going to download the template now. And then when it's done, it's going to ask you a series of questions about this project. So first of all, the project name, that's fine. Uh, project description, yep, that's fine as well. Your email address, use SAS, I don't want to in this case. And it's going to generate that for you, this project. And we can see all of these files now have appeared on the left inside this directory, which is cool, right? So to get started, it says, first of all, we have to CD into this directory. CD just stands for change directory. So we'll say CD and then go into the Vuex hyphen playlist directory. Then we need to run npm install. And what that's going to do is install all the dependencies for this project. So if we have a look in package.json, you can see down here, we have these different dependencies, view and all these different dev dependencies. So what npm install is going to do is install all of these dependencies for us. So let us run that npm install. And I'm going to see you on the other side. OK, so once all of that is installed, the final thing we need to do is say npm run dev and that's going to run this application in development mode. Then hopefully it's going to load up your application in a browser for you, which looks something like this at the minute. So this is the default application we've installed now. We've created using the view CLI. And if we just go back to the code, we can see that code or that component rather that's being loaded in in the app .view. So this is the code right here that is generating this view for us right here. OK, so now we're in a good place to start our own custom view application in the very next tutorial.